Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I do like a CPU comparison and today we're looking at how 2017's 6 core 6 thread i5 8400 compares to 2022's quad core i3 12100F. Both of these were well reviewed at the time of their respective releases and while this might not seem like an obvious comparison I was curious to see which of these processors, both favourites of mine, would come out on top. Will four modern cores with hyperthreading outpace the six older cores? There's about four and a quarter years between these two, and the older i5-8400 can be found here in the UK for around half the price, albeit used compared to new. Both support DDR4, 32 gigs of which clocked at 3200 MHz was used in dual channel mode for testing. Of course, the i3-13100F is also out now, which is slightly newer, but in my opinion, it isn't worth the extra money over this 12th gen offering. So let the comparisons begin. First of all then, let's talk about pure CPU performance. In Cinebench R20, the i3 comes out on top in both single and multi-core runs, and when it comes to rendering 1080p video, the newer CPU will also be quicker. Despite the newer architecture, I wasn't honestly sure what to expect from the results today, and at this point I'm wondering how these performance differences translate into gaming results. I'm using a 2080 Ti for the following tests. Now the i5-8400 was one of the first 6-core i5s available, I believe it was also the first 6-core CPU priced at under $200 from Intel. Once compatible lower cost motherboards came out, this was an even better option for those who wanted a great price to performance PC build. The footage of its efforts is on the left of the screen. The i3-12100F, 2022's value king, is on the right side of the screen. This was and still is a fantastic choice for those who want to build a brand new system, but don't have a very large budget. It is one of the fastest quad cores you can get at the time of this video. First of all then we have Cyberpunk 2077, which is running at 1080p as all games are today, with the high textures and the medium preset. Remember this comparison isn't about just pointing out the obvious and seeing which CPU is better, rather it's sort of a chance to look at how things have progressed over time and also appreciate how the older hardware has held up over the years as well. The i5-8400 coming in at 84 FPS on average is still doing a decent job and the i3-12100F hit 111 on average with improved percentile lows as well. Red Dead Redemption 2 is up next at 1080p with the ultra textures and everything else was set to high. Geometry LOD was set to max and the grass LOD was set to 2 out of 10. TAA medium was also enabled. Now the i5-8400 hit 86 FPS on average which is a very respectable result but we are going to see higher CPU utilisation in and around busier areas and that is responsible for the lower percentile figures. That said the i3 did also drop a little bit in and around the aforementioned areas with 67 FPS as a 1% low and 59 as a 0.1% figure. Both CPUs we're actually holding the 1080, sorry, 2080 Ti back a little bit in certain parts of the game. Counter-Strike 2 is a more CPU intensive title and here at the lowest settings with the i5-8400 we saw 231 FPS as an average with a 1% low of 119 and a 0.1% low of 82. Remember we have just 6 physical cores and 6 threads with the i5. The i3 on the other hand has 4 physical cores but it does have 8 threads and it is a lot newer. Despite this, the result was closer here than I thought it would be with 253 FPS for the i3. The percentile lows were actually very similar when compared to the older i5 with 121 compared to 120 and 84 compared to 82. So not much room there at all and both CPUs will offer a very nice experience in this one. Forza Horizon 5 is another game whereby the results were very close and I think this is because this is far more GPU intensive. So in both situations we probably could have gone with a slightly better GPU. That said, there were instances with the i5 where I noticed much higher CPU utilization, and that is reflected in those percentile lows. So with the older i5, the aforementioned percentile lows were quite a lot lower. I'm talking 
80 compared to 101 and 68 compared to 87. Aside from that though, the averages, well, there was just a few frames in it in terms of the performance overall. But where you're going to notice that change here is with those 1 and 0.1% lows. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered up next with the very high preset and TAA. The i5-8400 put in a very good effort once again with 92 FPS overall. The 1% low was 57 and the 0.1% low was 34. So the occasional dip and drop, but nothing off-putting here. The i3-12100F, the newer CPU, hit 115 frames per second. Again, we saw a couple of dips here and there. That 0.1% low was actually slightly less here than it was with the i5, but the 1% figure was higher. So it's a good experience, I think, for both CPUs, but the i3 comes out on top overall. Starfield up next, and yeah, as you can imagine, this one is going to be a lot closer because it's a little bit of a mess as far as CPU usage is concerned, but it is clear that the i3 um, is the stronger chip here in this scenario with 59 fps compared to 52 i'm running around the city of new atlantis here which is far more process intensive and where we notice the biggest changes again is with those percentile figures there are going to be more instances where i see the i5 8400 hit sort of 90 95 percent utilization than there is with the i3 which again was to be expected but i think both chips have done okay considering the game we're playing here. Finally, it's the turn of The Witcher 3. This is with the next-gen patch applied, of course running in DX12 mode. With the Ultra preset, HBAO+, and SSR, or screen space reflections, turned down to low with TAAU as our form of anti-aliasing, the i5 put in a decent effort of 81 FPS, though in and around those city areas, we are going to see a few more dips and drops, particularly below 60 FPS. This is where hyper-threading, uh, let's say for example with the i7-8700, would really help out. The i3-12100F, another very nice average, 110 frames per second, and our percentile lows were also improved as well. I think this highlights that the 12100F is still one of the best value for money CPUs you can buy. Not necessarily worth spending the extra on the 13100F or say the 12300 in my opinion. That's going to be even more of a smaller difference. But I think it also highlights that the i5 with its six cores and six threads has done really well over the last four years and it's still hanging in there. It's still a great CPU for a budget build if you can find an appropriately priced motherboard. Plenty of which seem to be available on sites like eBay. That brings our comparison to a close then. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of either of these CPUs down below in the comments. Leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know if there's other, any other comparisons you'd like to see. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.